You create a trigger where click element variable is used. You enter a condition where that variable should contain some value, but the trigger never works. Why? Let me explain. Here I have a demo Google Tag Manager container. Inside of it, I have a Google Analytics for event tag. It fires on a link click trigger. And I also have enabled built-in click variables. For example, click classes, click element, and so on. Also, I have enabled the preview mode. And this is the demo website where I have installed my Google Tag Manager container. So if I go to Google Tag Manager and I check the link click trigger, it is looking for all link clicks where click element variable contains menu item. And here, if I go to the preview mode, I select the link click because I have already clicked a menu link. Here I will see that in the variable section of the link click event, click element actually contains menu item right here. And my trigger was supposed to work, but actually it won't work because Google Tag Manager preview mode is not telling you the whole truth. Even though it says that click element is a string, it actually isn't. A string in programming means that it's a text. For example, if I created a trigger where click text contains pages, that would work. This variable is of string type. The same would apply to click target, click ID, but with click element, that would not work because in reality, click element is an object which is a more complex data structure. But for some reason, Google Tag Manager's developers decided to display click element as this text right here. Let me show you what the click element actually looks like. In Google Tag Manager, I have another tag, which is a custom HTML tag, and all it does, it just logs to the browser's console the value of the click element, or in other words, various parameters about the element that I clicked. So now if I go to the website, and then I open developer tools, go to console, and then if I click this link, this is what was locked. Now you might say that this still does not look like a very complex data structure. Well, let me then modify the code to use console dir instead, because it will show us more information about the element. So now if I click save, and then preview to refresh the preview mode, then open developer tools and click the menu link again, it will show us the element that was clicked. So far it looks basic, but if I expand it, you will see various parameters about that particular element. So it has key and value pairs. I could, for example, click here and then expand this even further, or I can click here, then click somewhere else just to expand and see what kind of information is available about that element. So this is not a simple text that you can match with the contains operator in your trigger. This is a much more complex structure that requires different configuration in your tags. So if you are just starting with Google Tag Manager, my tip would be to try to use other variables available in your Google Tag Manager container. And I mean other click variables. For example, if I was looking for the menu item, then if I click on the link click event and go to variables, maybe you would have some information right here. But in my case, I'm not that lucky. Click classes, click ID, they're all empty. So then I would need to go more advanced. And if you are also in the same position, you would need to learn a topic called CSS selectors. In this video, I will not be explaining the topic in depth because there's a lot of things to cover, but I just want to show you the direction. If you want to learn more tips, then take a look at the description of this video where I will share a link to a blog post about this very same topic. And I also share some additional resources that will help you dive deeper into this topic. But just remember that if you are starting with Google Tag Manager right now, this might be too difficult for you. So if possible, it might be easier, at least in the beginning, for you to ask the developers to add some classes or IDs to elements so that these variables would populate values. Now going back to my example, I want to track all link clicks where there is a menu item class somewhere in this string right here. If I go to the website, do the right click and inspect, this is the link, or in other words, the element that I want to track. But the class menu item is on the parent element. In CSS, we would need to write the following selector. Also, one more thing to mention is that the click element variable, if you're using that in the trigger, will work only with two operators. So let me show you. Here is my link click trigger. 
here I have the condition that click element must contain menu item, but as I've said, contains will not work because click element is not a text, it's an object. So the only two operators that will work here is match a CSS selector or does not match CSS selector. And if you switch to this, it will still not work because this value right here does not follow the syntax of CSS selectors. So if I want to track all link clicks, or in other words, clicks on a elements, and those elements are direct children of the element with the class menu item, here's what the CSS selector will look like. I want to track a elements, which are links, and those elements must be direct children, so that's the symbol, of another element that has the class menu item. But in CSS, it's not enough just to type the name of the class. You actually have to tell that this is a class because how will your code will know whether menu item is a class or ID or something else. So class in CSS always starts with a dot. If we translate this to plain English, it will mean this. We're looking for clicks on links and those links must be direct children of elements with the class menu item. And now this should work. Let's click save and test. Now I will hit the preview to refresh the preview mode, then click continue, then go to the website and click on the menu link. Then I go to the preview mode, click link click, and my tag has now fired. And if I click it, I will see that my CSS selector was matched and the element that was clicked was correct. Technically, you could also try to copy part of this particular selector because it's a very long selector. It's like a chain of various classes, IDs, and so on. So technically, you could try to copy part of it and then use it in your trigger as a condition. But this is risky. Your CSS selectors might be unreliable. They might easily break because maybe a developer will do some change in the code. So I would not recommend just copying the entire selector or copying part of it if you have no idea what CSS selectors are. Instead, you should invest some time and learn at least the fundamentals of this topic. And as I've said, I have some resources mentioned in my blog post. Also, I have a separate module in my intermediate slash advanced Google Tag Magic course where I talk solely about CSS selectors and how to use them in Google Tag Magic and how to build more advanced click triggers. And that's why your trigger with a click element variable does not work. Remember, click element is an object and it does not work with the contains operator. It works only with matches or does not match CSS selector. To properly work with this variable, you need to learn CSS selectors. I have a module about this topic in my intermediate advanced Google Tag Manager course. You will find the link to it below the video. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.